Lecture 10 begins with a discussion of naming for monoatomic and polyatomic ions. Our naming convention is going to come from IUPAC. That is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. So this is a worldwide agreement on how to name things. We'll start with monoatomic ions. Mono, of course, means one. So these are ions that are formed of just one atom. For a monoatomic anion, we simply change the ending to ide, although sometimes the suffix is dropped. For example, the neutral sulfur atom, when it gains two electrons, becomes the sulfide ion. So the ur suffix has been lost, and an ide ending is added. Monoatomic cations have no change. The sodium atom, which is neutral, when it loses an electron to become sodium 1 plus, becomes the sodium ion. So here are some examples. This one we would call aluminum ion. This one we would call strontium ion. Nitrogen, neutral, becomes nitride ion with a 3 minus charge, and iodine neutral becomes iodide ion with a minus 1 charge. Here are some common polyatomic ions that are used in chemistry. Polyatomic means that these are ions composed of more than one atom. So hopefully from previous chemistry courses, you're familiar with these. If not, there are some flashcards in Moodle. NH41 plus is known as the ammonium ion. H3O1 plus is known as the hydronium ion. Perhaps you've come across the acetate ion. I'm almost certain most students have seen the hydroxide ion. The carbonate, nitrate, these chlorine-based ions and nitrite are ones that I can teach you to name based on a naming convention. And phosphate, sulfate, and sulfide are included in that. Unique ones that you might come across are the chromate ion, which is CrO4 2 minus, the dichromate ion, which has two chromiums, and the cyanide ion. So here is a naming convention that will help you understand some of the names of the polyatomic ions. This is a convention for oxoanions, so that means polyatomic ions with oxygen. First we're going to start with examples if the central atom is not group 7. What do we mean by that? This is group 7 in the periodic table. So we're talking about groups 4, 5, and 6, which form polyatomic ions with oxygen. So this is why there were not very many examples of finding the oxidation state earlier in the chapter. We're going to get a lot of our practice now. It turns out that if the central atom is in the highest oxidation state, the polyatomic ion ends with 8. If the polyatomic ion has one less oxygen atom, so that its oxidation state is the maximum minus 2, then the polyatomic ion ends in it. So here are two examples, SO4 2 minus and SO3 2 minus. Here is a general idea for what their structure looks like. So you notice that sulfur is in the middle of each of these ions and surrounded by oxygen. Thinking about the oxidation state, I hope you remember rule 5, which says that oxygen is a minus 2. This means that the sulfur has to be plus 6. And if it's been a while since you've done oxidation states, let me help you out. There are two elements, and the total oxidation state sum must be minus 2 for the charge on the ion. Each oxygen is minus 2. And together, they make a minus 8. So the algebra that works is that the sulfur is plus 6. 
So this is the maximum oxidation state of sulfur. Sulfur is in group six. It has six valence electrons. So plus six is the maximum oxidation state. So this polyatomic ion is called the sulfate ion. If we look at the other one, you notice it goes from four oxygens to three oxygens. This means the oxidation state has changed by two. So if you work the math on this, you will realize that this sulfur's oxidation state is plus four, not plus six. So it is the maximum oxidation state minus two. It has one less oxygen, so it's going to end in ite. So we call this the sulfite ion. So please try this exercise with carbon in CO3 2 minus. Please give the oxidation state, the group number I have given you, and the appropriate name. Let's try the same for nitrogen in NO3 1 minus. Find the oxidation state. It is in group 5 on the periodic table and choose the appropriate name. You may encounter oxoanions that have hydrogen on them, but are still overall negatively charged. An example would be this one, HPO3 2 minus. What I recommend doing to name this is remove the hydrogens and make the charge more negative for each hydrogen removed. So if this starts at HPO3 2 minus, for this example, I only need to remove one. So I'm going to make this PO4 3 minus. This is the phosphite ion. I know this because the oxygens will have a minus six oxidation state for three of them. So the phosphorus must be plus three. If it is in group five, but has an oxidation state of plus three, we have the ite ending. So this is phosphite. Now we can go back to the original ion. We just have to add the word hydrogen or bi to the front. So this would be hydrogen phosphite. If you have two hydrogens, there are examples where we might have that. You would call that dihydrogen phosphite. And let me very quickly give you an example of one that I hope you're familiar with. Perhaps you've heard of sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. So what is carbonate? Well, carbonate would be CO3 2 minus. So a bicarbonate would be HCO3. And since we made it more negative by one going to the right, we're going to make it more positive by one going back to the left. So that is the bicarbonate ion. So here is an example for you of a polyatomic ion that has hydrogen in it. What is the appropriate name? Oxoanions that are based on group seven have a much wider variety of oxidation states. So now this would be things like chlorine, bromine, or iodine with oxygens around them. The naming convention is the highest oxidation state of the central atom, which would be plus seven. We give the polyatomic ion the name per and let it end in eight. If there is one less oxygen atom, it's an eight. Two less oxygen atoms, an eight and three less oxygen atoms, a hypoite. So you notice the naming convention that eight has a higher oxidation state of the central atom than ite. We just need something to say super eight and much lower ite, hence the per eight or the hypoite. So here are some examples. In this oxoanion, chlorine is in the middle and oxygens surround it. If we get the oxidation state of the chlorine in ClO4 1 minus, each oxygen is minus 2, which makes minus 8. 
Something minus 8 must equal minus 1, and that value is plus 7. So plus 7 oxidation state is the same as the valence electrons around the chlorine atom and the highest oxidation state chlorine can have. So we call this ion the perchlorate ion. If we have one less oxygen, the oxidation state of the chlorine drops to plus 5, and we call this the chlorate ion. If we have two less oxygens from the original, the oxidation state of the chlorine drops to plus three, and we now have the chlorite ion. And if we are down to one oxygen, the oxidation state of the chlorine is plus one, and we call this the hypochlorite ion. And maybe that's something you're familiar with as well. Maybe you know that bleach is sodium hypochlorite. So kindly apply this process to the BrO3-1- polyatomic ion. Bromine's in group 7, so follow that logic. How about if we take an oxygen away, and now we are to BrO2-1-. And for variety, let's move to iodine, which is also in group 7 and give it one oxygen. What is the oxidation state of the iodine? And what is the appropriate name of this ion?